So for me, creating and making love are the same thing because I kind of expanded my idea of what it means to make love yeah. because in conversation and everywhere else, making love is like a sexual thing or like a Always, romantic right. thing. Yeah. Your educational experience includes a stint at the Uni of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. What do you think you got from that experience that you might not have gotten if you were like a self-taught artist or a self-taught creative? Mm -hmm. I think just exposure, honestly, and structure, because I learned a lot about what it takes to do things and I've self-taught myself photography, but I studied film. Yeah. And the difference between my photography practice and my film practice is huge because with my film practice, like there's steps that I know how to follow and I yeah. know what result I'll get. Whereas with my photography, like I definitely scrambled for a while until I found a system that worked. So I think it's also just like timelines of doing things and also just, um, support like community support because you're yeah. working in a classroom you're working with other people you get to like learn a lot from the tasks that you get in school and even just um exposure to different things that have nothing to do with what you're studying yeah. like for example i used to just like walk into other lectures just to like you know get some like vibes, vibes. <laughs> and i'd learn a lot of different stuff that would actually inform like my practice like I even took random courses like politics and philosophy and things like that and that helped me become like a better storyteller whereas with like photography as much as I can like read up other things and maybe absorb from life it's a bit different when you have yeah. immediate exposure and structured exposure to like a lot of different things that can inform your practice yeah fair enough yeah. I hear that man and so like you mentioned right there, you went to UCT and you studied uh, film, right? At the mm -hmm. bachelor's in film or something like that. Yeah. Um, when, like, one of the things that always makes me curious is what informed that? Because that's not like a very, I don't want to say normal, <laughs> but it's not like in vogue, exactly. Yeah. It's not like a, 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 a program that's really like popular for like a Zimbabwean to do. It's not one of those things that would be like encouraged like mm. from uh, high school like you wouldn't have many high schools say yeah like definitely go and do film mm. in the way that they would maybe encourage you to do something like uh, be a doctor or be a lawyer it's not really like the norm in that regard right yeah um, so when it came to like picking that up as your as your major what informed that and was that something you always knew you were going to do or you were like on the fence until it was time to choose and be like, yo, we're gonna film. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a bit of both because I knew that I wanted to study film when I was picking my lower six subjects because like I spent a bit of time like, you know, wandering around thinking, what am I gonna do? Because now you must pick subjects that, you know. That inform the next step. Yeah, like, choice. that inform the next step. It's very deliberate. Yeah, and I was good at computer stuff, I was good at like English and history kind of things, but I didn't necessarily want to do law, but... Because that's usually the... Yeah, that's usually <laughs> Where you're going to get pushed, yeah. And because both my parents are lawyers, there was also that, like, you know, expectation that, ah, yeah. okay, you've chosen... Naturally. Me. Yeah, you've chosen my <laughs> arts, so now you're going to be a lawyer. <laughs> and I genuinely applied for law. <laughs> and I oh, got a place, bro. yeah, at Stellenbosch. <laughs> but in my heart of hearts, I knew that I wanted to do something creative because yeah. I've always been super like into creativity and expressing myself. So I literally just Googled one day when I was like, literally the day before we had to submit the yeah. subject form, I was like, okay, what can you do with like arts? Like if I study history now, what can I do? Da, da, da. Then I saw this course from, I don't know, some American university and it yeah. was a cinematography course. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Like people this is something. Learn this? Yeah, people learn this. I was so mind blown. I'm looking through the course content. I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, I don't care if my parents understand or not. This is what I'm gonna this do. This is it. And yeah, so from the age of 17, lower six, I'm going to school. I'm picking my subjects. And even though I had that in the back of my mind, there was still a lot of like 
back and forth like is this like yeah. when I told my parents they're like oh, <laughs> this is and not then? yeah this is not making sense what are you gonna do afterwards da, 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 da. that's but, usually the question yeah. yeah what happens after what happens after but I convinced them I told them just let me give it a try then if it's not working after a few years I'll just like switch to something yeah. more practical so yeah that's I, how you I got knew, your... but I didn't know, you know? Yeah, fair yeah. enough. You're, you're essentially just committed that I'm going to like pursue this. Yeah. You know? And so, film. Um, fantastic um, medium to tell stories. Why do you think um, it's important to like document narratives and, and the history of our communities um, as Africans and just as people in general? Yeah. For me, it just like occurred from the experience of looking for information and not being able to find it. Like, for example, just being a Debele person yeah. to start with. Like, if you go on the internet, a lot of the history that's there is either like inaccessible academic papers that you have to pay for, yeah, to pay for it. Yeah. or it's like old stuff written by white people. And that just felt weird to me. Like, why can't I access my history the same way I can access like random stuff about like some white person who did yeah. whatever they did yeah so yeah just as a way of combating erasure to make sure that there's like evidence of our existence and to make sure that that evidence is also coming from our perspective yeah um and also like being queer i think for me is very important to like document the narratives of like what's happening now because there's a tendency for stories, even if they are told, they end up being one-sided a lot of the time. And yeah. I think the more people that invest in documenting stories, the more different the perspectives yeah, can be and the more honest the representation can be. Um, and yeah, even just the idea of like representation is super important for me because like, I definitely grew up watching a lot of white and black TV, but I did, like, want white things. Like, I had white ambitions yeah. for a very long time. And it took me a while to actually realize the value of ambitions that align with, like, who I am as a person or who I am as an African and culturally and all of these things. So just to have voices amplified that represent where I'm from and like where my neighbors are from is just important for me because it helps people you know have that um, capacity to imagine themselves and like see themselves more yeah. in life and like yeah yeah I hear that and 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 I love that because <laughs> I could just take that bit as it is and that's essentially um, why we are doing like story untold right because yeah. perspective and perspective our own perspective, like yes. us like actually owning and controlling the narrative for mm. once. Because like you say, um, most of our exposure uh, to media is like very foreign. So you find yeah. yourself wanting all these things that really like, that don't even fit into your context, exactly. especially when you come back to Zim. It's like all these things that you're like watching and aspiring to, mm. you can't necessarily achieve them within this context. So it's like, yeah. It's a weird place to be as a person, I think. So I, lo I, yeah. I really love that. I love that. And so you've, you've mentioned that, right? I, I feel like that's the, the overarching um, story that uh, Tandi Gula wants to tell. Um, and f just from what you've mentioned, I get the impression that um, you and maybe this is me cheating because I actually read as well because <laughs> but, <laughs> that one of the things that you've always not struggled with but uh, longed for is like a, a sense of belonging and finding spaces where you fit like comfortably right yeah. um, and I think I would like to say from the outside looking in it looks to me like you've managed to to do that um, to like a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I mean. and, and, and the question here, I tend to ask like very like long-winded questions, but please yeah, do stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, how have you like managed to do that? Is that something you can put into words? Because I know that there are like many creatives, uh, myself included sometimes, uh, who feel like really like isolated, where it's like, yeah. is this stuff I'm making 
does it like connect with people yeah uh, is it just weird it's yeah. like <laughs> you're making things and putting them out into the world yeah and then sometimes getting feedback but for the most part during the process where you're making it like you just have no idea so for you how have you managed to find yourself in spaces where you feel like comfortable you fit you belong and you create yikes <laughs> uh, <laughs> no like that question really made me think about yeah. different stages of like that feeling or looking for that feeling yeah. of belonging and it's funny because as much as i've found like a comfortable pocket at the moment to exist in where i feel a sense of belonging yeah there's still that sense of isolation of like yeah but i'm like this you know and there's still that question of ah oh, does this really connect or whatever yeah um but i think it's mostly through like i'm a very like if i go somewhere you yeah. will find me in the same spot like i will go there that's where i'm comfortable so i'm like that with people as well i like to like um create clusters of people yeah. that i work with and i mean i usually meet people through people i'm not that person who's like meeting everyone yeah, and you're then not, introducing you're not pulling people. up on your own and no <laughs> i'm not like i'm that person who like gets the friend to introduce them type of thing yeah um so it's it's literally just through the closest people around me that i found like a sense of belonging fortunately most of the people i'm close with are also in the creative industry so yeah. it's like seeps into other things like work and because we have such a good like sense of intimacy or like friendly rapport we like yeah. then choose It to work together to, yeah. yeah and obviously the work that we do like speaks to our values and then that also exposes us to other people who like share the same vibe and might connect with those people might not but i kind of tend to like keep going back to the same place yeah um and that's how i've like found my sense of belonging so it's very difficult for me to like step into new environments and just be like yo what's up yeah yo what's up i'm here <laughs> like there are no way i like, do a b c and d that's not me <laughs> like even when i moved to joburg i first looked for the people that i knew from cape town and said hi like i'm in joburg yeah. if you need someone to assist you i'm around let me know da, da, da. so that's exactly what i did i literally hit up my friend who i worked with in uni like on our graduation film i'm like i'm around so yeah. if you need to work i'm here, I'm here. and that's you just it from there. yeah i just took it from there yeah. and it worked <laughs> i love that i love that because it also like uh flows perfectly into um essay right because you've um you've experienced SA as as a student and you've worked there as well right um mm. and you've experienced the same um what uh what are the things that you are there any things you would take from essays like creative industry and bring them to zim mm-hmm. and like vice versa are there any things that you take from zim and like bring them to essa yo definitely <laughs> um like i actually wish there was like a middle point where these spaces emerge yeah. and we can all just like <laughs> go in and out of it um but from essa i would definitely take the let's just see type of vibe because even from the very get go of stuff that i was doing in uni as like side projects from yeah. my studying like it was a lot of people who were just like well i have this idea and making an effort to like really invest in it and build in it like not just invest in it like oh like let's make some time but even resources like the first web series i did i remember like the director was like guys let's gather all our old clothes and do like a sale so we could yeah. fund the episode pay people yeah. have money to like do things See the you thing know through. yeah and it's it's this like level of attaching your idea to resources that you have in a very tangible way that i wish i could bring back home but i also understand the limitations we have at home because yeah. survival is like a bigger deal here yeah, it's at the than forefront. it is there yeah it's at the forefront in a way that's like it's way more major like literally if i sold my clothes now like i wouldn't put all that money into like a project i want to do because yeah. i know there's nothing else you know i need to split that money between okay surviving yeah. and the project so i guess it's a little bit of that freedom to dive deeply into your ideas with your resources and your like networks and also just the pace of things like i really 
maybe not so much Cape Town, but more so Joburg. I really love how in Joburg, like if you meet someone today and you're like, oh, let's work, let's do this and that. There's like very, I don't know what the word is, but it's a very let's get it done kind yeah. of attitude. It's like people understand that we're living on borrowed time kind of vibe. Whereas at home, I find that the pace is a bit slower. Yeah. And like we'll do it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, man. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and it takes forever. Um, if it gets done. <laughs> yeah, if it gets done. If it even gets done. Um, but sometimes that's also okay, you know, because yeah. I even find that sometimes that Joburg vibe gets a bit too much. Um, and then I would take the sense of community and share it with... So the sense of community from Zim. Yeah, from Zim. I'll take the sense of community from Zim yeah. and share it with the people, like in people in SA. Yeah, because I feel like the sense of community here is rooted in a lot of like an understanding that we need each other, mm. not that we know each other. Like I feel like when I was in Cape Town and Joburg, it's a lot of like, yeah, yeah, I know this person or this person does this. But there's no sense of like care, you know, to say, oh, guys, like this person is showing today. Let's make sure we're there like every, supporting. Yeah. And it's it's really encouraging each other. Whereas it's like, I felt like in, in, in SA, it was more of like showing face and just being like, oh, yeah, we were there. Unless yeah. you're quite close with the person or someone you yeah. know is close with the person. You don't end up like Yeah, up. exactly. Whereas here, it's like, People are close. Even if you don't know the nitty gritty details of someone's life, like people really show up because there's like that sense of like we're holding each other down yeah. kind of feeling. And I guess that's also more so in the young community. I wouldn't know much about the older the creative older guys, community. Yeah, fair enough. But I've also noticed that even the older guys are like becoming part of the young community because of what they're seeing yeah. and how the young there's community is. There's just so much moves. energy right now, right? Exactly. Like, um, what else would I take? Um, I think also like as much as there's limitations around resources at home, yeah. like yo, people here know how to make a plan. Like, ee. <laughs> no, like ah, people here know how to make a plan like I've never seen before, you know. And I think sometimes having things becomes a limitation because you always want a level of comfort around those yeah. things to exist in order for you to do something yeah and as much as people that side have this like let's do what it takes mentality i think people here are more boundary pushing in what it takes for them to do something and in like utilizing the resources they have because yeah. they know that ish if i have this 20 bucks i need to feed my idea and i also need to feed myself and yeah. like somehow though. yeah somehow so yeah there's that yeah. and i think that's why also the community connections are so strong because we like really share our resources like that here um yeah and i just think the sense of groundedness is really important that we have here compared mm. to that side like here i don't know anyone i can't think of anyone who i know who's like really who cares much about like being popular or like you know that clout kind of vibe yeah, like especially yeah. if you're within the community like i'm not talking about celebrities and things like yeah, that yeah that's a different game <laughs> yeah it's a completely different game and like people are very genuine about like let's support or like this is who i am there isn't that like yeah well you can't sit with us kind of vibe yeah, or that, yeah definitely. it's very definitely. much like this and everyone is just looking towards this kind of like connection feeling yeah yeah i definitely i definitely um get that sense i want to talk about a specific detail of your work that like repeatedly pops up uh red like the color red seems to be like a fixture in your work um mm -hmm. i was at your exhibition I think, well, that was late last year isn't it mm -hmm. december yeah yeah exactly um and yo that room was just like red <laughs> <laughs> And then when I was doing my research, I, it, it, I then learned that, you know, it actually goes like way back as well. Like you've got yeah. a lot of work that's just red. Yeah. And so is that like a conscious thing? What, what happens there? Like, <laughs> Honestly, for the first, I would say it only started being quite a conscious thing 
when I realized that, oh snap, like there's so much red going let's on. Keep yeah, <laughs> let's just keep going. Like I just always found myself drawn to it. And sometimes it just happened by accident. Like for example, one of the very, very first shoots I did, it's like a self-portrait and I put the lights around my neck. I don't know where the red came from because I had a yellow light in the yeah. room. But next thing the shot has red, I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on this here. Is, this is what, it, what it's meant to yeah, look like. Yeah, this is just what it's meant <laughs> to look like. And that just kept happening because honestly, like with like photography, lighting, I'm not so, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just set things Fair up enough. and things happen. I'm like, oh, okay, well, this looks nice. And I just noticed it kept happening like that. Like, yes, maybe here and there I'd have a red backdrop and stuff, but that's just what I had. Yeah. It wasn't like, because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to find we a red thing. <laughs> and then in 2020, when I got like the first opportunity to make work for like a, it wasn't necessarily a residency, but it was kind of that kind of vibe, like an online residency and yeah. exhibition thing. Um, I had just said to myself, you know what, I want to make a red robe cape type of thing. But then because I knew that this work wasn't just like my own playthings and there was like a need to explain stuff, yeah. I was like, okay, fine, let me actually do some research. Like, what will red mean if I put it in this context? Um, then I asked my grandmother, because I was um, imagining like the, the future kind of yeah. vibe. And I imagined this being who is part human and part land or part nature and their duty within this future ideal community is to kind of um, be a medium between the humans and nature so that yeah. when human beings need food or want to farm or want to build on land they speak to this person and this person speaks to the land and they tell the humans what can be done on the land or they get permission or whatever yeah. so i just spoke to my granny just like wanting to find out what different colors mean in our cultural context and just telling me oh well, you know red is usually like ikalaye mashikiro like people who uh, are those like, <laughs> are those mediums are yeah. those spirit yes. mediums yes exactly Yo, i'm here trying no, to crazy, find man. the english <laughs> <laughs> i think spirit mediums <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fair enough, because for a second it's all I'll try to, like, I'm like, yo, we, no, but I mean, Mashikiro's yeah. fair enough, like, everyone basically knows what it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If you don't, go and learn. Yeah, you need to be doing some research if you don't. So she told me that, and I was like, okay, cool, and she was telling me that there's different types of Mashikiro who deal with different things, and she was saying, could you usually read is for like about Femi, people who farm or people who hunt and like things like that. And I was like, oh shit, that really connects well with my concept. Yeah, yeah with what I'm trying to. Uh, I'm there like per, like I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm moving on with We're the within. <laughs> Yeah, now it's aligning with what I'm doing. Yeah. And I just thought at the time, like, yeah, cool. Like it's just, now I have something to explain if someone asks me why the red yeah. and continue to do the work. But that process of making that work 360'd my entire creative process and even just me as a person because strange things were just happening. Like yeah. I would just wake up and be like, today I need to go find this fabric or this material and experiment with it and put it in the work. And I had an idea of what I wanted to build, but by the yeah. time I was done with the work, it was way beyond way what I different. thought, yeah, yeah, what I thought it would be. And this being that I would imagined like has a white long beard and like white long hair and um, in Dubu, like chimbo. A staff. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a yeah. staff. And they like rest by the water and all these like little details that like I've built in the whole vibe. And only I think maybe three months later when I was having a conversation with somebody, which is still part of the whole residency set up, there yeah. was like a panel kind of vibe. So one of these guys who was on the panel is like a super spiritual person, like he's walking the path, chi chi chi, like yeah. I told you, you know, deep, in the deep, traditional yeah. deep five, and he's like, yo, do you, are you in this life? I'm like, no, like I'm <laughs> just making art, you know? <laughs> he's like, mm, because some of these things, God. 
they're deeply connected so i think you should just like explore and find out for yourself yeah. what do these things really mean and how they connected to you in your lineage yeah. and culturally and i'm like oh okay well i've actually been interested in finding out more about these things and he connected me with other people and got to share knowledge and stuff and i found out so much about the significance of red like culturally yeah and i just thought yeah okay cool great like that's just maybe it's a color i'm drawn to for some reason come 20 the year before last is 2021 21 right. yeah 21 now come 2021 this is a year from that whole the vibe residency, of the work. Isn't yes it? Yeah. Come 2021 and I go through like initiation, like traditional yeah. initiation to kind of, I guess, accept my calling and start working with my ancestors kind yeah. of vibe. And the person who came through me, which is my great grandfather, asked for a red cloth because you have to like, you have to dress the Wadzimu when they arrive. So he asked yeah. for a red cloth. And after that, everything made sense. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I was being spoken to. Yeah, I was being spoken to. And he even said that, like, he was an artist, he was a farmer, he was all of these things that, like, I have an interest in. Yeah. And then from that point, I was like, okay, like, I get it now, and I'm going to be intentional about this. Yeah. So there's times where the red feels appropriate. Then there's times where it's like, no, maybe let's just use blue or, like, white or whatever. (laughs) But now it's intentional. But at first it was just, you know. It was, it was vibes. <laughs> it was vibes but it until it wasn't. Didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know like, what, it, what it actually meant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I do love um, that you mentioned um, calling and, uh, calling and, 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 and working with, with ancestors, like hand in hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> because uh, those are things that I have... Um, I, I always tend to say to people that um, God and our ancestors are, are constantly like speaking to us, showing yeah. us. If you can listen, like the voice is always there, like yeah. nudging us in usually positive uh, directions, right? Yeah. Um, and so I love that uh, you actually like made that transition. Um, this wasn't scripted because I didn't know you were going to tell me this, right? Uh, but <laughs> Has, has, has how you work like changed uh, since like making that like transition? Um, yes, actually, yeah. to some extent it has. I think I'm more, I include, I always had certain rituals about creating. Like I always yeah. knew that, okay, before I start, I need to just like chill. I need to really tap into what the fuck I'm doing right now. Yeah and shut out everything else or i need to like maybe have a nice like smell kind of incense or come music kangu like things that i knew would connect me to like my center but now like i'm more because i understand certain like cultural things i'll actually observe those things as i start my process you know like for example when i used to shoot in outdoor places or whatever i mean i just go now i set up and i'm going you know go. but now i know that no you get to a place and you ask for permission you speak to your ancestors you speak to the ancestors of the place as well and ask for permission ask for protection and then you start and i also now like i ask to get out of the way <laughs> <laughs> you have to explain yeah. this a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm very like, I can be very specific about what I want to see in an image if it's like, because usually I'll like have an idea in my head yeah. and I'm like, I'm going to make this exact thing. And then sometimes in the process, if it's not working out, I can just leave it because yeah. I'm like, ah. This is not it. This is not what I envisioned. Exactly. But I realize that I get in the way by doing that sometimes. So I always like make a small prayer. Like as I've asked for permission, I always like express to my ancestors that like I understand this is a a gift that you've passed down to me. So like help me get out of the way. Like let me just be the vessel for whatever message and whatever like what needs to be shared yeah. right now. Yeah. So that's that's where I am now with the work I do. Like I just understand some level of 
reverence and ritual that needs to be attached to the process. Yeah. Yeah, but besides that, it's pretty much still the same. We still wing it, we still wander around yeah. and then something still learn, happens. We yeah. still learn on the job. <laughs> we still learn on the job. <laughs> Fair, fair. Yeah. Um, I love that, man. I, I love the concept that you spoke of uh, uh, being a medium. I uh, deeply believe that um, every person is a medium, is a means to a certain end. Um, if only we would allow it. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of times, I think, as, as people, we we complicate things. Mm. We, we complicate things a lot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we complicate things a lot, but let's not even get into that. <laughs> What I would like to to ask you though, um, and this might feel like taking you back a bit, but uh, the mediums you've chosen, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Videography, you've chosen mediums that are mostly visual. Yeah. Videography, fine art, uh, photography. Um, why do you think those particular mediums uh, work best for you, like as a creative? Mm. That's a really good question because <laughs> it's something I've never really thought about. Yeah. Like for example with film, I just started doing it because also I was studying and I wanted to tell stories and I thought yeah movies, you know. Yeah. And then while I was doing that I was like shucks this is expensive, this takes long, let me do photography. Ooh yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah making a film, yeah, it's, you need the people, you need whew. like the equipment. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And then I, the collage thing is something I used to do as a kid. Then I just stumbled upon it while I was like looking at my old photos and playing around in Canva. I was like, oh, I can do this. Then I started making it. Yeah. So I think they've just appealed to me as a natural part of like being, yeah. you know, and like actively in practice. But when I think about it, I'm very... I love making things feel real and for me like visual things stimulate me a lot so for a lot of the time that's what makes things real for me like even with an idea or a word even for me to spell a word I first need to see it in my mind and then I can spell it so I think I've just been drawn to those things because innately that's how my imagination works it's very visual first and then sounds come after. Like even with sounds, like I feel like I visualize a sound before I... Before you. Yeah. yeah. Cause even yeah. with um, my last body of work, I experimented with sound and it was really cool getting to make sound work. But I remember even in the process, like when I was working with Tando, I was telling her, you know, so like, you know when you see a wave crashing on the shore, like I want it to sound or feel like that. Yeah. So it's like, it's always <laughs> it's coming always from lit. visual yeah. vibes into, yeah. So I think How can I'm, we translate this visual yes. into an auditory experience? Exactly. Yeah. So for me, feelings are attached to things that I can see or somewhat visually comprehend. Yeah. So I think that's why I've just been drawn to that, honestly. I love that. I love that. Um, I love that because it, it gives me... Um, a justification people have been asking me for like an auditory uh podcast right yeah. because like we've got the audio is there yeah <laughs> uh, but i've just not like committed to making it and um i don't know i have like a really strange relationship with uh audio that's mm. devoid of like video i i like video i feel like yes. it's everything comes together the yes. sound and then you can place the person you don't have to you don't have to listen to tandy speaking and mm and then be like i wonder what this person looks like yeah exactly <laughs> it's, it's all there like everything so is much, there yeah like you don't have to add anything you just you just consume yeah right? you, i love that i love that and then there's something you've said and um i was reading this and so usually when i when i research and i read stuff i tend to i tend to for, for the most part i tend to comprehend like wow what uh someone is getting at uh and it was even i think even in that context it was described well um Mm -hmm. but you you said that um the quote was uh when making love through sex one has to relate allow and be willing to be vulnerable 
This is the same with photography and any other form of creative expression and collaboration. Yeah. So that just blew my mind because it was like, yeah, this is like artistic expression uh, being compared to uh, lovemaking. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for you, like, why is that the case? Is that, is that something like you can explain? Because I, lo yeah. I love that, but I also <laughs> don't fully, like, get it. Yeah, no, I get it. And honestly, I've thought about that a lot of times because I tend to go back to that work that I did because, I don't know, it just always does something for me when I yeah. go back to it. Um, and sometimes it doesn't land, but it makes sense, but it yeah. doesn't land. <laughs> but when it has landed, it's because I remember this like idea of oneness and the interconnectedness of everything and for me like a lot of what oneness is is yeah. the feeling or energy of love you know like even when you look at the sky and there's birds and it's pretty and it's a sunset you get this feeling that's yeah. like so wow and for me as much as that's beauty or whatever whatever it still goes down to the feeling of love yeah. And even if it's like things that end up like on the opposite spectrum of love, like somewhere down the line, there's like the concept of love, whether it's a lack of or an abundance of it. So for me, creating and making love are the same thing because I kind of expanded my idea of what it means to make love yeah. because in conversation and everywhere else making love is like a sexual thing or like a Always, romantic right. thing yeah. yeah but there's also so many people who exist who make love all the time without engaging in sex without yeah. engaging in anything romantic you know if anything they're actually very averse to that they're yeah. very like that's yeah. they have no interest whatsoever asexual yeah it? exactly damn like today i'm just like the words are just like yeah no, it's <laughs> fun though i'm your i'm your webster <laughs> <Mary of Dixon>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so i was really it's something i felt in the process because i was shooting with a friend of mine and i felt so much connection and yeah. so much <laughs> intimacy and so much like passion in a way that I could only relate to like maybe a sexual experience or like that kind of intimacy you share with somebody yeah. else even if it's not sexual and I was like shit like this feels like making love this like this crazy, whole like. process <laughs> like damn you know so yeah that's how it happened for me and that's how I think about it now is like it's just different ways of expressing love and also like the actual process of not generating but like because it's not something you generate it's just something you almost like absorb and yeah, yeah. share yeah, you share it with people. yeah. so yeah it's, yeah it's making love because you can't create without vulnerability you can't create without opening and sharing and yeah. you almost can't create without a level of passion even if it's one percent passion there's a need for passion there's a need for even safety you know and yeah, checking yeah, in and trust and yeah and yeah. trust and all of these things and i was like oh yeah actually so there's very many ways to make love that have nothing to do with with, with, sex. with sex yeah yeah i love that I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. I think I'm 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 with it now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fully. <laughs> yeah. I'm fully incorporated. <laughs> but um, you had the exhibition last year. Um, just like a fantastic uh, piece of work. I uh, loved it. Loved seeing everyone who came through for you. Who came to like experience that. Um, with something like that, right, uh, when it becomes clear that you're exhibiting or you're showing this to people, um, what, what's your goal like going into that? What was yeah. your goal going into like the exhibition last year? Mm. I think for me, my main goal was to feel real. I'm very obsessed with the idea of feeling real. Yeah. And there's moments where, especially because of that thing of an artist's isolation and your ideas and all of these things, there's a very blurry line between yourself feeling real and these ideas that you receive or work on feeling real. Yeah. So the exhibition felt like finding some form of flesh 
and the flesh being animated in order to like actually do things and move people, move things and yeah. yeah so I just wanted to feel real but I also wanted to share that feeling with people where it's like you're also real you know your internal journeys and like fears and the things that you overcome and the things yeah. that you celebrate they're all very real and you're not alone in that being real yeah that yeah. was my main yeah. main thing like actually. your main goal yeah I love that man. I love that <laughs> I love that and so is there is there anything like I don't want to say exciting because exciting might then like make you not want to commit to the answer right <laughs> <laughs> but um what are you working on right now like what what yeah. space is Tandi Bule in right now like work-wise like, um very can you expect interesting. something soon or like, um not even gonna lie like i don't know child like okay. i yeah. don't yeah. know <laughs> um there's obviously like things that especially more on the collaborative front like i really want to be experimenting with sound and sound art and music yeah so that's something that i've committed to and have said okay i'm like giving this time and like experimenting but I can't even say you can expect it because I don't yeah. know where that's going. Because you don't going. know like, yeah, yeah. what the outcomes will be. Yeah. Um, but the space I'm in right now is like kind of like an incubation. Like I'm focusing a lot on regenerating my spirit and myself yeah. and kind of reconciling with my new ambitions or my yeah. new priorities and values and things like that. So. I feel like I'm like maybe, what you call it, like a, a caterpillar in a little cocoon yeah. right now. That's <laughs> where I'm at. Like, I'm yeah. resting. Yeah. Like, really. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I was stressed about work. Like, I'm doing little bits and pieces of work just because you kind of need to. Like survival. Yeah, survival. <laughs> what we were talking about before, yeah. yeah, but right now my main thing is really just... Yeah. Have, you, have you watched um, have you watched Star Wars? No, I haven't. Oh man, I the thing I'm picturing as you say all of this. So the main antagonist in, in Star Wars, um, Darth Vader, yeah. I will put the picture up. I hope they don't like copyright. <laughs> no, you have to. But even if they do, man, like I think it's worth it. Like he's he goes into like after they go to like the fights and whatnot, the, the action at least, yeah. to work, he comes back and he goes into this tank. Mm. and they fill it up with i don't know what kind of water that is mm. but it's like special water that like that is me. charges him up yeah. <laughs> bro that is literally me right now <laughs> that's, that's what i'm picturing yeah that's where i'm at <laughs> like that is exactly where i'm at just like absorbing the lessons and even just the impact of having created that body of work yeah like honestly it it takes a lot to get to like that kind of result, whether it's just like personally fighting things in your yeah. mind or walking through rites of passage to even be able to articulate yeah. such things. So I still feel like I'm like, you know, taking a wusa moment and figuring out what is needed for me right now yeah. and trying my best to just like meet those needs. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I think, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a beautiful place to end, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for making the time.